Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Josh and I talk a lot about cybersecurity stuff. I've been a CSSP since 2015 and I just recently renewed my license so I thought it'd be a good idea to make a video. In addition to giving away this free CISSP practice question deck with over a thousand practice questions in it, we're going to be covering the following. We're going to talk about what exactly is CISSP. We're going to talk about the benefits of having a CISSP. We're going to talk about how to go about getting one as in what are the actual requirements. We're going to cover how to study for it. And then I'll show you how to download and install and use the free CISSP practice questions. And then I'll kind of talk about whether or not I think it's actually worth getting CISSP in 2023. So if you're thinking about getting CSSP or you're interested in cybersecurity at all, I, I highly recommend watching this video, like put it on 2x, watch it to the end. It will be a great use of your time, I promise. So before we get started in an effort to help bridge the skill gap and fill some of those empty cybersecurity roles in our industry, I recently released a super hands-on cybersecurity course where we deal with actual live attack traffic on the internet. Essentially, we create a miniature security operations center in the cloud using Azure and Microsoft Sentinel and practice actual incident response against actual bad actors on the internet who are attacking our resources. There's over 550 students in the course, super active Discord. We kind of hang out there and help each other out. So definitely check it out. I'll put a link in the description as well as a discount code for 10% off. So getting right into the content, what is CISSP? So CISSP stands for Certified Information Systems Security Professional, and it's pretty much regarded as the gold standard in our industry as far as certifications go. Pretty much everyone who's in tech in any capacity has at least heard that acronym before, and it's kind of assumed if somebody obtains CISSP, they're at least semi-serious about their career. That's kind of the sentiment that people have in our industry. The cert itself is not too technical, but it is really, really broad and it covers a really wide range of topics. So just kind of keep that in mind. So in my opinion, the main benefit of having this cert is that HR absolutely loves it for some reason. It is the absolute king of certifications in cybersecurity for actually getting interviews, not necessarily like passing the interview. They're not going to be like, oh, you have CSSP, like, you know you're hired it will help you get interviews a lot especially if the rest of your resume is pretty okay looking also out of all the kind of mainstream cybersecurity certifications the cssp by far has the most hits on job sites you can probably look it up at any given time and it will probably have more than like CISA, security plus like ceh like any of those it's likely going to have more than those at any given time which translates to a lot of success with your resume in terms of like applicant tracking systems and which ends up resulting in getting interviews so basically, if you want to like maximize the number of interviews that you're, you can get, I kind of recommend getting CSSP. Obviously, you can go your life and have a great career without it, but it's just one of those things that like really helps out in that regard. Not to mention the average salary for CSSPs is pretty high. And I'm not going to really like get into it in this video, like getting CSSP equates to a large salary. But the general idea about that is if you're the type of person to go through the rigors and like trouble to actually get CSSP, you're kind of the type of person to end up earning a high salary. It's not like CSSP equals high salary, but likely you're going to be able to earn a high salary if you're able to be, you know, go through everything that you need to get CSSP. That's kind of how that works out. Getting into how to actually get CSSP in terms of requirements. There's a kind of semi misconception about this where people think like, oh, you need to have five years in security role. But if you look on ISC Squared's website where they talk about the requirements, they say that you need to have at least five years in two of the eight domains. So what this kind of translates into is say you're a desktop admin or something like this or any role right and then for example part of your main job duties are identity and access management and device security something like this covers two of the five domains so you don't need to be like a SOC analyst for five years or an auditor for five, five years or something to get CSSP you just need to have worked like a full-time job in two of the eight domains for five years and that five years can turn into four years if you have any of these certifications that ISC squared kind of outlines on this page and for me for example when I got CSSP my my actual job title was information technology specialist and it was in 2015 like I said and I didn't actually start working in cybersecurity with like a cybersecurity role until 2018. It's just that I had experience in at least two of the 10 domains but I had experience in two of the, the eight domains which allowed me to get CSSP. So getting into how to actually study for CSSP in the most efficient manner in my opinion and this is what I did I kind of used a three-phase approach that is the first phase being a priming phase the second phase being a 
learning phase, and then the third phase being a polishing phase. So, so basically in the first phase, I recommend getting a nice video series. I kind of looked on Reddit for what people are using these days, and I came up with this uh, Mike Chappell's videos on LinkedIn Learning. I haven't used these, but they looked okay, and a lot of people seem to like it. So in this phase, I might procure a nice video series and just kind of watch it. And then as you're watching them, of course, pay attention to what's happening, but don't stress too much about taking notes and trying like too hard to remember things. In this phase, like the priming phase, you're just kind of making sure you understand the topics at a high level. Don't like pause it and stress out and take like a million notes in this phase. Just focus on understanding what's being presented to you. Just watch the videos all the way through. They might have like quizzes and stuff at the end and feel free to do those. The most important part of this phase is you just kind of prime your brain to really learn the rest of the material in depth. And you just want to focus on a general understanding at this phase. And getting into the next phase, the learning phase, this phase is the most intense phase, I would say, because this is where you like really focus on learning stuff and researching stuff on your own and making sure you understand everything. In this phase, what I'd recommend is getting your hands on some nice practice questions. Uh, I'm going to include some in this video, so you can definitely use these as part of your arsenal. Make sure the practice questions are good quality and they actually have explanations, at least for the correct answer. Just make your way through the practice questions and as you're doing them, make sure you understand every aspect of the question. You want to make sure you understand what the question is, why the correct answer is correct, and why the incorrect answers are incorrect. And in this phase, you want to take your time and make sure you understand everything. And it's okay if it takes a long time because it likely will take a long time. And the material for CSSP is not exactly like fun. It's like a little bit dry. So just take your time, go through the practice questions, make sure you understand every aspect of every question. Also, I highly recommend leveraging chat GPT in this section. It's really, really good at explaining things to you. You can ask it questions like, you know, what is like NIST 853 for? And then when it says something to you complicated and or like hard to understand, you can be like, oh, can you break it down more simply to me? Can you explain it like I'm 10? Can you explain it like I'm five? And you can you can do this for like any topic that you don't understand. Or you can even ask ChatGPT, like make a multiple choice question for me about like NIST 861 and just kind of make sure you understand all the topic um, as well as you can. And phase two is complete when you've kind of gone through all of the practice questions that you've procured, you've at least gone through them one time. And maybe you've created some of your own questions, but at least you've seen everything there is to see essentially in terms of your practice questions. That kind of signifies the end of phase two. And then getting into the final phase of study, the polishing phase or the review phase, you could call it. Basically, all you're doing is kind of going over your practice questions again. It's best to do this with spaced repetition with a program like Anki, which we're going to talk about next. But you just want Want to keep reviewing the practice questions make sure you understand everything at a pretty decent level you'll notice you're coming to the end of phase three when you start getting like too many questions right and like not really very many wrong and maybe you, you might start feeling bored because it's like you're exposing yourself to stuff that you have a pretty decent grasp on try it hard not you know memorize answers because that's like not going to get you anywhere but thoroughly review until you start getting too many correct and then you start getting bored you'll know that it's probably time to schedule your exam also i want to say you really want to be thorough about this and don't underestimate the exam because as of now like May 18 2023 it costs about $750 just to attempt to take it so it's not something you want to fail even once so take this like three phase approach really seriously take your study really seriously especially in like phases two and three I studied about three hours a day for about 90 days doing this type of approach and it was enough to pass with like a decent amount of room I felt after I took the exam and then finally getting into the practice questions that you can use for phase two and phase three I put a link in the description. All you have to do is click that, download the deck, unzip it onto your desktop. It might look something like this. Um, this app is called Anki. You can just download it for free essentially on the internet. So once you have this installed, go ahead and open it and then you'll have the deck that you downloaded on the desktop. You might have had to unzip it. All you have to do is double click this and it should automatically import and it will look something like this. And basically you will expand this and it kind of expands out and shows all of the different domains as well as the questions for the domains. And you'll see it says like 20 here or something, but that's because you can configure Anki to show you a certain amount of new cards every day. So I might recommend, for example, going to the parent deck and then clicking this settings thing, and then we can go to options. And then you can say new cards per day, and you can say, you know, 99999 or something essentially to, to kind of show all of them here. And basically, if you haven't heard of Anki before, you haven't really used it, I highly recommend watching one of these videos. It's a really popular application. It implements spaced repetition that shows 
dosey stuff at smart intervals to maximize like, the efficiency in which you can like learn and memorize things. And a lot of medical students use it and I'm sure a lot of lawyer like law students use it too. They have to memorize such a large volume of information. I've used this for so many things, including studying Japanese and it just works really, really well. So definitely watch these videos to really learn how to use it in depth, but I'll, I'll just kind of do a high level explanation of it. So for an example of how you might use Anki, this is my actual deck that I'm kind of working on in quality controlling. And I've been using this for a while. So you'll have this new column here, which signifies the number of cards in these decks that you haven't seen yet. And then this do column here means the number of cards that you need to review, like you've seen them once before, and that's how many you need to review. So this is like kind of the top level deck. And these are all of the subdomains or the separate smaller decks underneath. So basically just to, you know, quote unquote study or how to use this, I'll click on this deck and I'll say study now. It will ask a question, for example, like which of the following is the primary goal of data integrity? And you think to yourself like, oh, is it A, B, C, or D? And then for example, say I think it's C, I'll think in my head, okay, it's C, let me like see what it is. And you click show answer down below. And if it is C, if you got it correct, then you'll say it's either easy or if it was like a little bit hard, then you can say good. But if you got it wrong, you have to say again. So for example, if I say easy, I've seen this card a couple times already and the interval keeps getting spaced out more and more, like every time I see it. So if I say easy, the next time Anki will present this card to me will be in 1.5 months. If I had to think about it and it ended up being like kind of hard, like the next time I'll see this card will be in four days. If I straight up got it wrong, it's going to like reset my interval and it will show it to me again in the next 10 minutes and it will kind of restart the intervals. Every time you see a card and get it right and you say, you know, good or, or easy, Anki like shows it to you like a larger interval of time. And the idea is going back to these, the idea is you'll finish phase two when you don't have any more new cards to learn and you're only reviewing cards if that makes sense. Thanks for watching and best of luck.